Hi, I'm Brian with HVAC School. Thanks for watching this video, which is with guest instructor Ty Branneman. Ty is one of the most interesting, exciting, and dynamic educators in the HVACR space. He was kind enough to come down and visit us, and he visited our apprenticeship program in Eustis, Florida at Lake Technical College and taught the students about compressor diagnosis. And specifically, he talked about a compressor diagnosis scenario that he had run into earlier in the day, riding with one of our service technicians. So I think you're gonna find this to be applicable. I also added a link to Ty's channel down in the description. So please go to Ty's channel, check out all of his amazing videos on YouTube and subscribe to his channel. He truly is one of the most dynamic and interesting educators in our trade. Hope you enjoy. So if I have electricity with very little resistance between line one and line two, and there's a whole lot of push, but very little resistance, how fast are those amps gonna flow? Very fast. fast! So fast that it trips the breaker. Immediately, so they're flowing from line one to line two with very little resistance. Electrons are gonna flow super, super fast, as fast as they can. And what happens when you move electrons really fast? Like heat. Wow. It gets hot, right? It gets hot. So what's happening though, is this compressor inside shorted out. The electrons are flowing, instead of going through a circle through all the windings, it was going from line one to line two too fast. To save the house, the breaker trips, right? That makes sense? People say all the time, you don't ohm out compressors. That's a perfect example of how we can ohm out that compressor without having to do any math. We just ohmed it out and said, hey, even not knowing what these numbers should be, they were, this one set was really, really low, extremely low. We have a breaker tripping, we have low resistance. Do you see a connection? It was shorted out. Now you'll see people say, oh, I have a bad compressor, but I always wanna know how, why is it bad? It's not just bad, it's like, oh, it uh, stole a carton of eggs and it was hungry. Or what made it bad? It's not just that it was, you know, it called somebody a name and offended somebody, what made it bad? I wanna know, did it ground out? So if we would've checked line one, line two, uh, sorry, from line one to ground or line two to ground with continuity, with the power off in continuity, then it's grounded, that means from one of these terminals to metal, I'm getting flow. Does that make sense? Yeah. Remember when we pulled that compressor out and we had all those windings in the very top, all those windings, the electricity is supposed to flow through all of those different coils. If it's grounded, that means one of these windings, let me be able to see it here. Nope, see, look in there and see the windings. If it's grounded, it's touching one of those windings and the metal casing, that's grounded. That it's also, that's a bad compressor. In this case, it was not grounded. What happened was, instead of electricity going through all those different coils, here's an example. So instead of electricity touching from these wires to the metal ground, it was, instead of going through all these loops, it was taking a shortcut. So it was just going across this one, across that one, or maybe it's going through every fifth one. The insulation, the varnish on here melted. When the varnish melted, instead of electricity having to go all around the loop, it takes a shortcut and just goes across. So this compressor, for some reason, it started overheating and these windings, the insulation, the varnish on these windings started to bake off. When it bakes off, electricity can take a nice little shortcut. Now they're moving faster, which makes even more heat, which bakes more of the insulation off, which makes more of a shortcut, which means more heat, you see the pattern? Domino effect. And domino effect, that's exactly right. Until now, electricity is flowing so fast from line one to line two that it's tripping the breaker. That's what we had today. This is how the first method we use to check it. So here's another method. Now there's a lot of things you can ohm out, right? There's several things that can be shorted. Here's the next method. Pull the plug off of the compressor. Make sure the, the plug's not touching anything. In this case, there's three wires, which is a little bit more dangerous, but if you have the plug, and you leave the plug out. So if I leave this plug out and I was to turn the unit back, back on, on, what, what would happen? Nothing. Because it shouldn't trip. It, should, it shouldn't it should. trip? Nothing. Nothing? What do you say? The fan motor would come on. Yes! Don't leave me hanging here. Yes, the fan motor would run. The condenser fan motor is running, but what else would be running? Everything is uh, air handler. The blower would be running. The transformer would be uh, dropping its power down. Your outdoor fan motor, everything but the compressor. But everything stayed on. It didn't trip the breaker anymore. Now, there's a third thing that we checked. So now we know the meter says this is shorted. We unplug this, and now it's not tripping the breaker anymore. So that also confirms that we have an issue with the compressor. 
Is there another thing that we can check? Nothing is stripping the compressor after you unplug that from the compressor. Is there another thing we can confirm on this compressor to see, hey, we have a bad compressor? I don't just want to tell the customer, hey, the compressor has been bad. Uh, you, um, well, plug it back in. If it trips the breaker, we know for sure. Right. But what else can we check? How do we know if, if maybe it went bad because there's a refrigerant leak? You check from a line to the compressor and if it bips, if you have continuity, then it means. Yeah, yeah we, we could check. check. If we did check. It means you're grounded. Think about refrigerant, the refrigerant side. Let me give you a guide. Think about the refrigerant well, side. What, what happens if you replace this compressor? Is there any way to find out if something else is wrong, if the new compressor is going to be blown to bits too? You've been here before. <laughs> yeah, but you can't because the compressor's not running. But the key thing is, do you have any refrigerant at all? So you put your gauges on. Do I have any refrigerant at all? What if it shows zero? What would that tell you? It overheated. You have a leak. You have a leak, yes. And leaks aren't just in supermarkets, right? We also end up with leaks in our uh, residential systems. Oh, somebody got it. I'm impressed. Good. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we also end up with leaks in our residential system. Now, if it had a leak, that would tell us what killed the compressor. In this case, we had refrigerant. But when my, uh, my guy took his gauges off, I had him do something particular. After he took the gauges, there were probes. There's no refrigerant left. It's just the oil that's left. I had him do something. Can anybody guess? What I had him do with the gauges after he took them off. You got the sniffles in the <laughs> clinics? <laughs> sniff test, yes! Good, the sniff test. Why do you think we would do that? Confirm the leak. Not to confirm a leak. I like how you're thinking, though. I love that you're answering these to questions. The I love that. To spot the leak? No, there wasn't a leak. To see if the... Uh, we don't think there's a leak. The, the oil's been uh, degraded. Yes, to check the oil if it's been degraded. Also the refrigerant, so what we did is we took a little smell of it and it had this pungent smell to it. The pungent smell tells us, hey, we have an issue with the refrigerant oil. It was a burnout. Well, to recap, the compressor shorted. It wasn't grounded, but it was shorted from run to common. From start to common, we were still okay. But from run to common, we were shorted. So when it shorted out, it ended up also burning the refrigerant or burning the oil. That's also, it, when it was being shorted out, tripped the breaker. So this compressor was dead. It's not just that we checked it and it was tripping the breaker. It's like, hey, we want to know why. We want to confirm. So we confirmed it with our meter. We confirmed it by isolating the component, unplugging it. Everything else is now working. Then we also checked the refrigerant inside and found out, hey, we have an issue because the refrigerant smells bad. It's a burnout. So now when I go to the customer, it's not like, uh, yeah, your compressor is bad. No, we know without a shadow of a doubt, hey, this compressor is bad. That way, this guy doesn't come back behind me and be like, oh, hey, there was just this loose wire. Because I've seen that. I've seen the plug over here, uh, the terminal burn off, and somebody said, oh, you have a bad compressor. Then I come back, put a terminal kit in there, and they have another five, ten years out of that compressor. I got a new customer. So if I'm going to condemn a, com a compressor, I want to know that Bert's not going to come in behind me and be like, hey, Ty, I just took your customer. Now I have this unit, this customer forever because I fixed our terminal. We confirmed with multiple different ways to know, hey, this compressor is 100% dead. Next question. What would you recommend to the customer? Let's give you a scenario. The unit is 23 years old. The condenser fan motor is rusted. Coils are corroded. It's next to water. Fan motor is coated in all kinds of growth. There's rust everywhere. There's... Uh, the con the capacitor has been replaced before. They didn't replace it correctly. It's laying on the side on top of the swollen capacitor. It's already bad. Uh, heat kits are covered in growth. Uh, contactors pitted. What would your recommendations be? Replace the, the unit. That would be my recommendation. But hey, I recommend that we replace this unit. The customers say, can't you just replace that part? And you say, yes, but you need to warn them. We could do that, but here's going to be the price and there's going to be a lot of other risk involved. Me as a company owner, I would say no. There may be somebody that will. I will not do that work because here's what you have. You spent so much money on that compressor and now you put that compressor in, there's a leak six months later or a month later or the fan motor goes out now a week later. Even though you did this work, all this work, they're saying, hey, I paid you $2,700. I paid you $2,500. I paid you money and now it's broken again. That's in their mind. So I'm saying, hey, and me and, and mine, now you ask your company what's right for you, what they want to do, but me and my company, I would say, I don't want to be responsible for just replacing that compressor. You may find somebody that can, but to me, I'm like, hey, if you want to do something cheap, window units, 
You can't tell your customer that all the time, although I have before. Anyways, the moral of the story is shorts. We were talking about yesterday, electrical current resistance, and that job today played right into that. And it was a beautiful, beautiful scenario. And I was thinking, oh, I can't wait to get to class to talk to you guys about it. Thanks for watching and big thanks to Ty for doing this with us and being willing to have it filmed and shared on our YouTube channel. Like I mentioned before, please go down into the description and click the link to Ty's channel and subscribe to his channel. I think you will find it to be really great content and we will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.